I think there are several consumer behavior trends that are really important for retailers to pay attention to. And the pandemic really accelerated so many of these trends. Uh, one example of this is omnichannel experiences. Today, services like buy online, pick up and store, or curbside delivery are table stakes, and they really accelerated during the pandemic when consumers were worried about safety and convenience, I would say. Retail has become part of every person's journey throughout, and it's not a linear experience anymore. And I think that's, is, uh, that trend has only been accelerated by COVID, where we are shopping all the time and we are shopping using different devices from my Google Home to my app on my phone to watching a TikTok video. I'm continuously shopping and I'm being influenced by brands and retailers on the product. And the point of purchase can happen across devices. If you think about it, historically, people used to go into stores or to a mall and uh, to a bazaar and just look around and try to find what they're really looking for, they're inspired by. And when you think about an online shopping experience, it's just vastly different because the inventory is so much bigger. There are just millions of items out there. So how do you really make the different you know, shopping experiences discoverable for the user so they can actually go in and really find what they're looking for and what they're inspired by. I think the trends that will stick around in the future are those that are making customers' lives easier. So if you think about that convenience, that that convenience factor, that thing that makes my life easier, post-pandemic, I might continue to use curbside if I am hurrying home from work and I need to pick up some groceries. Social commerce is going to be a big part. As I watch that TikTok video, and I like a particular brand of sneakers, I want to know more about that. Social commerce is going to come up. Visual commerce is going to be another aspect of, you know, I like something, I take a picture of it, and I shop for it. I think all of these aspects of discovery are going to prop up. And increasingly, you know, when you think about, you know, uh, discovery, it's going to be beyond what happens with search, it's going to be beyond with what happens through browse category navigation. It's going to be on all aspects of our customer journey, whether it's in-store, online, or while consuming entertainment on TVs. I think thinking of uh, e-commerce product discovery as an infrastructure problem is probably the biggest pitfall that I see in the, uh, in the retail industry. The second is the lack of meaningful measurements, even if one invests in a machine learning based uh, systems. Because focusing on only downstream metrics like conversion rates or average order values or, or things like cart abandonment essentially misses the whole point. Right? Uh, one must focus on, in my view, uh, more important top of the funnel metrics like search abandonment, uh, for example. Because people could be giving up just because they can't find what they're looking for among millions of products that uh, a retailer sells. Product discovery should be ubiquitous. It's not just a search bar. It's actually an entire experience. It's your search function. It's recommendations. It's conversations with store associates. It's conversations with chatbots. Everything can really be a product discovery experience. And so thinking about that holistically and how to deliver the best experience to customers is really important. Um, I think another common mistake I see in, in product discovery, in search in particular, is kind of thinking about it, wanting to control a bad experience. So if you don't aren't happy with the search results that you're getting, you tend to start to put on new rules and you start to add on other rules. And so all in that attempt to optimize to what you think it should be or what your brand partners think it should be, you tend to kind of pile on rule after rule after rule and the results start to get really convoluted. Three things that I've seen that retailers could really figure out as they are thinking about you know, the pitfalls uh, of discovery. Firstly, I feel retailers still think about journey as siloed journeys. You know, they're thinking about that this is my mobile experience and this is what my app experience looks like. This is my store experience. This is my in-store app experience. 
and this is my website experience and increasingly what's happening is that experience is the same just the devices are different and while i do feel that we need to bring one consistent experience which is really adapted for that particular device consumption and we need to stop thinking in silos and can you start to remove rules to let machine learning do the work for you uh, can you think about your objectives and what you're trying to achieve and really start cleaning up the conflicts based on that a lot of times i think this, this is not just in retail but across the industry uh, we focus on you know building some fancy machine learning model and putting it in production and expecting to see results really quickly and that's just not how science works so we want to build that you know, the, the patience, the expectation setting and the experimentation culture to really get the algorithms, the machine learning that goes into product discovery uh, to go from zero to 100, um, hopefully with that culture. Remove the paradigm that one size fits all. Go back to the paradigm that each person is unique, their needs are unique and start thinking about how do you bring that personalized experience to a person of one. If you think about a shopping experience that you have had, any of you, I'm sure you have been frustrated by searching, you know, different things or browsing for different things. And you just know that that retailer has that item. You have seen it somewhere. Maybe you have seen it in the store. Maybe your friend bought it. You know, maybe you got a promotional email for it, but you can't find it on the website. And then you're going to bounce and leave. And yes, that's going to be an impact to the revenue, but then there is an uh, longer term impact, which is the impression you have from that retailer that comes in, in the form of your customer lifetime value. Google Cloud is working to reduce the issue of search abandonment with the recent introduction of Google Retail Search. We're very excited about this introduction. It brings retailers the ability to greatly improve their search results. So Google's search platform leverages our understanding of shoppers' intent. So what do you mean by face mask? Do you mean the face mask that goes on your face for a beauty treatment? Or do you mean an N95 mask? And those have very different contexts and different, different intents. That, combined with the historical behavior of the retailer's own customers on their site and their app, and the ability of the platform to be configured to what the retailer is looking for in terms of optimizing results, makes it a really effective way of reducing search abandonment. The advice I would give retailers that haven't yet invested in AI and ML is don't be afraid. I think it can be really intimidating, but look for use cases that drive value where you know that the effort you put into your AI and ML solutions is going to pay off. The other thing I would say is look to partners and, and independent software vendors to help you. There are a lot of great AI and ML solutions that are more out of the box and can really help accelerate your efforts if you are starting from zero. With the advent of AI and ML, and with the technology that Google has built with its knowledge graph, you're built learning systems. You gotta start thinking about how can I start learning from every user interaction that is out there. And that learning is powered by AI and ML and it's fed into your algorithms each time. We need to move away from rule-based system, which creates one consistent experience for all the cohorts and really leverage the power of AI and ML to build personalized search results and personalized customer experiences, which are only possible if you use the power of AI and ML to, em to enable all of your search and recommendations and discovery suites. Another advice I would have for our retail partners is to optimize for the entire journey, not just for transactions. Context is everything. Uh, make it a personalized experience by understanding user context. Journey can sometimes last for months, right? It's not a single transaction. If someone is building or remodeling their kitchen, their experience with the store could actually last for months. I think the idea of bringing brand experiences outside a company's four walls and their digital properties is going to meet with some really interesting innovation and changes in customer behavior, and I'm excited to see what happens there. The second area that I'm really excited about, and I've been working at this problem for a long time in my retail career, 
is thinking more holistically about optimizing and personalizing digital experiences for consumers across all marketing and experiential channels. I think we are at an inflection point. On the consumer side, we know there's a dramatic shift towards omni-channel commerce with digital transactions increasing every day. But then the consumers have the same expectations of personalized service that you get in the store. Right. On the technology side, the advancements in ML technologies, be it natural language understanding or vision AI, are now accessible to the entire industry. It's no longer limited to large tech companies. And this combination enables true consumer choice. And the new innovations that technology now makes possible is even more exciting. Uh, for example, we're already seeing some of these where uh, users find the t-shirts and color that fits them best without even going to a physical store or a cabinet that looks great in your kitchen, right, all from the comfort of your homes. I think we're just scratching the surface in terms of really getting state-of-the-art AI and machine learning into retail uh, offerings and I'm, I'm for one really excited to see how that can change the whole retail landscape in the future.